Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of SNL, Saturday Night Library Trivia. This series was created by Carrie and Amber from the Pal Branch and I'm your host Mandy, also from the Pal Branch. Alright, you guys know the rules at this point. Have fun, don't cheat, uh, pause anytime, those are the rules. <laughs> Today's theme is Southern Fried Trivia. I just got back from Tennessee, got all excited about the South, so here we go. Round one is general and or weird facts about the South. Round two is name that Southern character from movies and TV. And round three is name that Southern food. Okay, get ready, I do declare. (laughs) Round one, general. Where and what is the Mason-Dixon line? Question two, true or false? One North Carolinian collected a Civil War pension check from the federal government until 2020. Question three, in what year did tattoos become legal in South Carolina? Question four, what state boasts the largest drive-in restaurant in the U.S. and bonus if you can name that restaurant? Question five, how many Civil War era cannonballs were recovered under an Alabama sidewalk in 2015? That picture is from the Battle of Shiloh. I was just there, super excited, unrelated to this question, but this cannonballs was mentioned. <laughs> question six, which American state produces the most peaches annually? Question seven, true or false, General Stonewall Jackson's arm was buried in the plot next to his body. This is a civil war, obviously. Question eight, what makes most cemeteries in New Orleans unique? New Orleans, New Orleans. I kind of like New Orleans. I'm I'm, I'm going New Orleans. Question nine, how many people died in the deadliest storm in U.S. history in Galveston in 1900? Was it A, 400, B, 800, C, 5,000, or D, 7,500? Question 10, true or false, there is a tree in Athens, Georgia that owns property. (laughs) This was a fun story. Question 11, which southern city boasts more breweries per capita than anywhere else in the U.S.? I, in this case, and I think 
it's probably brewery versus a distillery, but just to make that designation, this is beer brewing. Uh, Kentucky absolutely holds the record for the most bourbon distilleries in the United States. But for this one, we're looking for Southern City and beer breweries, not distilleries. Question 12, what was the origin of the phrase, don't mess with Texas? So we're looking for the, how that phrase originated. And um, I'll give you a clue, it was in the 80s. I would have thought that would be older than that, but it wasn't. Question 13, what percentage of Florida is covered by swamp? And by swamp, I mean wetland, basically, to be more accurate. Question 14, the Appalachian Mountains run through how many states? So I don't need the actual state, I just need the number. And question 15, there are 12 states that are considered Southern. One point for each you can name, and if you look at the background of this slide, you'll get a lot of help. <laughs> So there were some states, like, I'll, I'll give you a freebie. Oklahoma is not on this list. Oklahoma was included in some way in some of those lists. Um, Southwest, I'm not talking like New Mexico here. I'm talking about tradition, like the Southern state. If you said the South, what that would be. I'm going to give you a longer amount of time for this since you're name, trying to name all of them. like background music there's already background music but All right, round two is Southern characters for movies and TV. So if you can name, I'm not looking for the actor's name here. I'm looking for the name of the character. And if you can also name the movie or TV show, that's an extra bonus point. Question one. So question two, I initially, I would just want a guy on the right, but if you can name all four characters, four points. Question three. <laughs> Question four. There are actually a lot of Southern Looney Tunes characters. I just like these guys.
Question five. You knew this was going to be in here, but I'm not trying to go too easy. I've never seen this movie, and I don't think I ever will. Just, I don't know. Doesn't seem like a movie for me. Do not enjoy. Question six. Question seven. Question eight. Question nine. Dreamy, dreamy question 10. <laughs> this is like first season. <laughs> question 11. This is one of those only one point awarded for this because the character name and the movie name are the same. Question 12. I'll give you a hint, this is not American Horror Story. <laughs> Question 14. <laughs> Question 15. I almost forgot this character. This guy is like my top three character, like characters in TV movie of all time. I love this scene. <laughs> He's drinking a mint julep. Ugh. I, I really almost forgot about it. And then <laughs> Mark, our friend here at Powell, was, said something about the outer limits and I was like, ah! <laughs> this isn't the outer limits, but it's related. <laughs> sort of. Question 16. I think I've seen this movie like six times. I love it. So good. Question 
Question 17. Question 18. I will accept the nickname. <laughs> Question 19. And question 20, I'm going to need both. <laughs> Alright, so round three is name that southern food. This is either going to be a classic southern food item or it is going to be a restaurant chain that originated or is known primarily it's a southern restaurant so you it's either going to be name the food or name the restaurant question one it's name the restaurant i left a little bit of that cup as a hint Question two, I'm not looking for a chicken quarter here. I'm looking for what is that uh, sauce called? Question three. If you notice, those are like little tiny burgers and that's all I'm gonna say. So question four, the stuff in the jar, but it goes on the thing on the plate. Question five, I left the uh, part of the logo as a hint because this could be a couple different places. We drove past one of these this week, but we had already gotten Taco John's, and we didn't stop, and I'm bummed. <laughs> Question six. Oh, so good. Question seven. This one I did not know was Southern uh, until I looked it up. Question eight, I will give you a clue. This is not pecan pie, but it is related. Or pecan, as we are doing Southern things. <laughs> I'll give you another clue. It is not custard pie either. Question nine. A clue for this might be, well, the color. The color of the box is probably the only clue you need, but that it's uh, chicken and shrimp. That might be a clue. A little biscuit in there. Mm. So 
So, uh, question 10, this is a type of um, product that can be handmade, but can also be bought and sold. Uh, and that's all I'm saying. Oh, question 11. <laughs> so this is the uh, the beignet mix, but the restaurant itself, um, the beignet mix is available all over the place. The restaurant itself is uh, only in uh, New Orleans, and I think there's only one. There's at least one original one. Mm. <laughs> My stomach just audibly growled. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? I'm so hungry, and these look so good. Question 12. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple clues. This is not turnip greens. This is not collard greens. This is not mustard greens. This is a poisonous plant that you have to cook and cook and cook and cook. I'll give you another clue because it's a hard one. There's also an Elvis Presley song about it. <laughs> Question 13. Mm. Rice in there? Biscuit? I love a biscuit. Mm. <laughs> Biscuits are so good. Question 14. Don't overthink this. It, it's what you think it is. Uh, shout out to Backstretch for making the best one of these I've ever had in my life. <laughs> Comes with honey sriracha. Ah, so good. <laughs> walk. Uh, do not walk, but run to Backstretch. And once you figure out what these are, order them instantly. You will not be disappointed. Question 15. I hadn't, I don't think I've heard of this place, um, but it is definitely a southern chain. Yeah, that's all I'm going to say. Question 16. Oh, so pr what a pretty dessert that is. So pretty. <laughs> Somebody just audibly growled again. I'm so hungry. <laughs> I love pe pe This is my year of peaches. Like I have, I in the south I got some um, some peach knee high. Like instead of grape knee high, it's peach knee high that I had for lunch. Um, peach everything this year. I'm just I, every every peach flavor thing I can get. I'm I'm eating this this summer. <laughs> So hopefully I can get some good real peaches pretty soon. Question 17. Again, don't overthink this. They're, these are in the north. Question 18. Oh, I made this once. It's so good. Oh. Any any Cajun Creole food, I'm just <laughs> head over heels in love with. It. There is nothing in that catalog I don't like. <laughs> oh, so good. Question 19. Um, all everybody even cares about is the sauce, so that's why that is blown up. You can see a little bit of the label too. This one isn't too tough. 
just put one of these in in Delaware like a year ago maybe something like that And question 20. Oh, I forgot. We're doing up to question 30 for these because the southern food is so good. I couldn't just do 20. <laughs> I love these. Love these. Love these. Mm. Question 21. This one's hard. I don't think we have any of these. this chain up north. Question 22. I just got done saying I would eat any Cajun or Creole food. I would try this, but I do not think I would like this. <laughs> I don't know. Question 23. Again, don't overthink this. We have one of these in Delaware. <laughs> Question 24, the greatest sandwich on earth. Ugh. My husband disagrees. He thinks the torta is the best sandwich on earth. He's wrong. <laughs> it's this or a banh mi. That is my favorite sandwich ever. This one though, oh, it's so good. I love Cajun food, you guys. I love Creole food. 25, I left the logo on there because it didn't have the word. <laughs> Question 26, I will give you a hint. That's a banana in the pan. Oh, I love this dessert. I don't even like bananas, but I like this dessert. Question 27, uh, I had this on DoorDash yesterday. I did not know it was a southern chain. Um, yeah, that's all the hint I'm giving. It's good though. It's, it's really good. So good. If <laughs> you guys see a trend of all New Orleans food, yeah, that there is a trend here. <laughs> it's all my favorite foods. <laughs> mm. I made this, but with clams one time. Woo! Question 29. Marysville just got one of these. <laughs> That's the only clue I'm given. And question 30. Oh, so good. <laughs> every, every like New Orleans dish, I'm just like, oh. <laughs> like, die. I'm so hungry. I gotta go home and eat, you guys. <laughs> All right, time for answers, y'all. All right, round one general. Where and what is the Mason-Dixon line? So the Mason-Dixon line is uh, the, basically the line between North and South. It used to be just around like Maryland and West Virginia. And then uh, it became kind of the unofficial like uh, line between North and South during the Civil War. So that is the Mason-Dixon line. It's not a real line. It's just kind of like a space between states. So true, one North Carolinian collected a Civil War pension check until her death in 2020. So her dad was really old when she was born. 
He was in Gettysburg, and then she died at 90, so she continued to get a Civil War pension check until her death in 2020. There was also, at some point, the last Civil War widow just died like a year ago, too, that she, it was a whole situation, but uh, she married a guy when he was, like, much older than her, and then lived a really long time, so, yeah, got a Civil War check till 2020. In what year did tattoos become legal in South Carolina? 2004. So before that, you could not get a, a tattoo in South Carolina. So what state boasts the largest drive-in restaurant in the U.S.? It is Georgia, Atlanta to be specific. And this is the Varsity Drive-In. It's been around forever. It's an institution in Atlanta. And it will, uh, over 600 cars can pull into that parking lot. So it's pretty crazy. How many Civil War air cannonballs were recovered under an Alabama sidewalk in 2015? Ten! They had to call in the bomb squad. Apparently this building was close to a munitions factory during the war, and they found ten cannonballs, full-sized cannonballs, underneath the sidewalk. <laughs> Which American state produces the most peaches? It's actually South Carolina, not Georgia. Georgia's known for peaches, but South Carolina produces more. So, false. General Stonewall Jackson's arm was amputated prior to his death, and then he died uh, a short while later. His arm is actually buried a hundred miles from his body, <laughs> and there's a little marker that's like, here lies Stonewall Jackson's arm, and then his body is somewhere totally different. What makes most of the cemeteries in New Orleans unique? They are above ground because of flooding. So, uh, the deadliest storm in U.S. record in Galveston in 1900, it was somewhere between, they said, seven to 8,500 people. So 7,500 is kind of in the middle, but it was a, a really, really bad storm. So true, there is a tree in Athens, Georgia that owns its own property. There it is. It's called the tree that owns itself, if you want to Google it. And the owner, um, in his will said, I really like this tree. I want it to own its own property. So they put an eight foot fence. The tree was, I think, killed in a storm and they planted its, uh, it's a white oak. So they planted its like oak relative. <laughs> and that tree to this day owns that little plot of land. All right, question 11. Which southern city boasts more breweries per capita than anywhere in the U.S.? Asheville, North Carolina. The origin of Don't Mess With Texas was actually a littering campaign in the 80s. <laughs> so it started out as like, don't mess up te Texas, basically. And then everybody, it just, it took over after that. What percentage of Florida is covered by wetlands, not really swamps? It's like almost 30%. It's a lot. Appalachian Mountains run through 14 states. I would not have guessed that many. Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland, West Virginia, Virginia, Tennessee, North Carolina, and Georgia. I just drove through the Appalachians in Tennessee like a week ago. 12 states that are considered Southern, and this is subjective. One point for each. South Carolina, Virginia, West Virginia, North Carolina, Mississippi, Arkansas, Tennessee, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, Kentucky, and Louisiana. Kentucky is a border state to me. If you said Maryland, actually kind of, let's, we'll do a point for Maryland because they historically have fallen kind of Southern lines, even though they're a Northern state. But there's your 12. Any one of those that you got correct, one point. All right, round two, Southern characters from movies and TV. So one point for the character name, one point for the show. One is Flo from Alice, Kiss My Grits. Two, okay, in order, Jethro, Granny, Jed, and Ellie Mae from Beverly Hillbillies. Three, John Boy from The Waltons. Four is Pappy and Elvis from, let's just say Looney Tunes. They, they appeared in a couple cartoons. Five is Ashley from Gone with the Wind. <laughs> of course I didn't do Scarlet, that's too easy. Six is Aunt B from, okay, so she was on two, actually. She was on... The Eddie Griffith Show, and then with, with uh, somebody put in the comments what the, it was like Mayberry something something, there was like a, um, a spinoff. So she was in both, but I mean the one, she, this picture is from Andy Griffith Show. Seven is Matlock from Matlock. <laughs> Eight is Uncle Jesse from Dukes of Hazard. Nine is Uncle Jesse from Dukes of Hazard. <laughs> Ten is Dreamy Dreamy Daryl Dixon from walking dead oh that's oh that's season one daryl dixon Whew. 11 is ollie from ollie 12 is tammy taylor from friday night lights 13 is julia sugar baker from sunny women <laughs> she was so good <laughs> 14 is blanche Devereaux from golden girls obviously i like her very southern outfit there 15 is leonard 
Bones McCoy from Star Trek. Ha! Ah, I almost forgot Bones, and so I had to put him in, <laughs> in uh, the most southern of these southern scenes. I won't go into the details, but he's having a mint julep. It's lovely. Oh, Bones. Bones got top three fictional characters of all time for me. I'm, I'm Team Bones 100%. Uh, oh, okay. 16 is Capote from Capote. Truman Capote. Uh, that movie's amazing. Rest in peace. Philip Seymour Hoffman. That was so terrible. 17 is James Brown from Get On Up. And what an amazing performance that was. That movie was good. 18 is Cletus, a.k.a. The Snowman. That is a big 10-4 from Smoking the Bandit. 19, Huckleberry Hound. <laughs> Obviously. And 20 is Cletus, the slack-jawed yokel, and his wife, Brandine. <laughs> All right, three, name that Southern food, and I got some facts here. Number one is Whataburger. Whataburger was founded in 1950 in Corpus Christi, Texas. Two, this is Alabama white sauce. If you said white barbecue sauce, I'll accept it. If you said white sauce, I guess. If you said Alabama white sauce, you are more fully correct. Uh, invented by Bib Big Bob Gibson's restaurant in 1925 in Alabama. That restaurant is still in operation. It's real good, too. If you haven't had it, woo, dip a fry in that stuff. Oh, all day long. Three is the Crystal Burger. It looks like White Castle, but it's in the South. It was created in 1932 in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Four, it's kind of hard to tell from this picture. This is Red Eye Gravy. Red Eye Gravy is essentially made from coffee and goes over country ham because the country ham is so salty and then the coffee kind of wakes you up. Mm, it's very good. Five is Zaxby's. We went past the Zaxby's and didn't even get to go and bummed. Zaxby's is kind of new. They were uh, incorporated in 1990 in Statesboro, Georgia. Okay, uh, I made this last night. <laughs> you remember when my stomach was audibly growling? This is the next morning. Um, I got so hungry from this that I went home and cooked an entire southern meal like biscuits, collard greens, uh, uh, cucumber salad, country ribs. It was a whole moment. Collard greens are absolutely delicious. They are, a collard has almost the same nutritional facts as kale, but it just doesn't have a good PR team. <laughs> or at least in the north, it's not as well known. In the south, obviously, collards are huge. So, Get this book, Big Bob Gibson's Barbecue Book. That same that same restaurant that's still open in, in uh, Alabama has the best recipe for collard greens. It's like ham stock and black eyed peas and onions and all the stuff. And you cook it down and cook it down and cook it down. And the, the broth that comes out of it is just absolutely delicious. I had it last night. So good. Get that book, Big Bob Gibson's Barbecue Book by Chris Lilly. He's like a, a pit master. That is a good recipe. I was going to just post the whole thing, but I think that's copyright infringement. So get the book. <laughs> Seven is Wingstop. Wingstop's kind of new. They are, uh, they began in 1994 in Garland, Texas. Eight is Chess Pie. Chess Pie is essentially pecan pie without all those pesky nuts. It's just like sugar pie. It's really good. <laughs> Nine is Popeyes. Popeyes uh, started in 1972 in Araby, Louisiana. So that is actually a Louisiana company. Ten is Virginia Country Ham. If you said Country Ham, that is acceptable. Uh, the difference between country ham and I guess it's called city ham. We've all had city ham. Country ham is dry brined and smoked and then aged, usually in open air. It does not have to be refrigerated. When I was in the South last week, you could just buy a ham just hanging up on a on a, like a shelf. Um, city ham, the kind that we have most common up north, is wet brined and then smoked and usually they add sugar and stuff. Uh, so this is a stronger taste, kind of expensive, very good. 11 is Café du Monde. Café du Monde is in New Orleans, and it was <laughs> they, the first Café du And again, I don't put in the comments if there's more than one. I know the original is still there. 1862, you guys. This restaurant has been open since 1862. And they are famous for chicory coffee. Uh, it turns out chicory, uh, the French in the, like the 1700s would put chicory in coffee. Uh, it's supposed to help with digestion and inflammation. The South, when the French came to New Orleans, they brought chicory. That little uh, blue flower you see everywhere in, like, the fields in Ohio, by the way, I believe is chicory. And then, well, one of them's cornflower, but I think one of them is chicory. So then, uh, during the Civil War, coffee became very, very scarce, so they added more chicory. And then afterwards, they just decided they liked the taste, and it was medicinal. I hate it. So if you like it, that's cool. And if you don't, that's cool, too. <laughs> All right. 12 is poke salad. It's not a salad. Um, poke salad 
is made of, this is a very poisonous plant. Uh, I recommend there's a book by Rick Bragg called uh, the, the Best Cook in the World. It's about his mom's cooking. He talks about you have to cook it like four times. Uh, it is like a weed. Same thing during the Civil War when they didn't have any money. They figured out you could eat some of this stuff. This recipe probably predates that. Salad, like S-A-L-L-E-T, is actually like a French-English word for a cooked vegetable. Um, I always thought it was pork salad, and it's not. <laughs> the pork salad is not a salad. That is pork. Uh, but yeah, anyway, I've never had it. I don't know that I would. It seems kind of sketchy. Uh, but in the South, it's like kind of a big deal and still like an old school thing to, to cook. So there it is. 13 Bojangles, looking delicious. Look at that rice. 14 is Hush Puppies. So Hush Puppies actually started as Red Horse Bread. That was the first recorded um, recipe of Hush Puppies. It's not because you're trying to hush the dog up, probably. Nobody really knows <laughs> why the name came about. Uh, red Horse Bread is because there was a fish called the Red Horse Fish, and they would make the batter for this fish. And then when they fried it, they would have extra batter and they would just fry that as like a little side dish. So delicious. I love a hush puppy. 15 is Biscuitville. I've never heard of this place, but I guess it's really old school. And their whole thing is they make biscuits fresh like every hour, which sounds delicious. Uh, they started in 1975 in Danville, Virginia. I forgot to say, by the way, Bojangles started in 77 in Charlotte. <laughs> I, I messed up the, the date thing. but So both of these are kind of 70s restaurants from the South. It looks great. I love the corn or the, uh, the grits with cheese on them. That's good. 16 is Peach Melba. Peach Melba was actually invented in 1892 at the Savoy in London. But it's, so it's peaches, raspberries, usually a raspberry sauce, and then um, vanilla ice cream. It was, uh, it became a big thing in the South because peaches are so good in the South. So delicious. What a good dessert. So pretty. 17 is Waffle House. Waffle House actually started in 1955 at the Avon Dill Estates in Georgia. So it's been around for a while. Obviously, there's a bunch up north. Oh, 18 is boudin. Mm, so good. It is a mixture of pork and usually pork liver. I use chicken when I make it. And then they put the rice in the casing. So it's a whole meal. Like, boudin is delicious. If you, find, if you ever see it for sale, buy it. Um, we've made it and cased it before uh, with my family, and it was, it was really good. 19 is Raisin Cane's, and I did this because everybody just wants the sauce. <laughs> Raisin Cane's, I kind of knew too. Started in 1996 in Baton Rouge, Louisiana. Mm, that's awesome. 20, fried green tomatoes, so good. Um, there isn't a recorded recipe of fried green tomatoes in the South <laughs> until like the 30s or something. Actually invented in um, a couple of Jewish communities in the North and the Midwest. I'm assuming just because there's a point where tomatoes aren't ripe yet. So if you're going to make a fried green tomato, you want to get very, like, no color on it. All green. It's going to feel wrong, but it's going to be fine. I looked for these at my Kroger yesterday on Halk Road. They did have them. <laughs> and then you want to pat them dry, do about a quarter inch cut, and then they're, they did a cornmeal batter. I do mine sometimes with a wet batter. Sometimes I do, like, buttermilk, eggs, um, panko, and then uh, Kentucky Colonel seasoned flour go get that Kentucky Colonel. That's what makes the difference. But, oh, they're so good. I might make those tonight. <laughs> 21 is Cookout Restaurant. I believe this is only a Southern restaurant. I've never had it. If you've had it, put it in the comments. Um, my cousins live in North Carolina. I asked them about it, and I think they said they, they had had it, but I, I haven't heard of this before. Oh, uh, let's see here. Cookout was invented in 1989 in Greensboro, North Carolina. These are chitlins. I didn't know it was spelled like that. It is the large intestine of... And any animal in the South is usually the pig. And they are uh, <laughs> a delicacy. You gotta boil them a bunch. You gotta put them in broth. First uh, recorded recipe was eight, uh, 1743 in England. Uh, yeah, I need a lot of hot sauce for this one, I think. I also was like, well, why? Maybe the large intestine isn't what you use to make sausage casings, but part of me was like, why not just use this as casings? But the yeah, that might be the small intestine, I don't know. Anyway, chitlins, if you've had them, put them in the comments. I'd try it, I just don't know if I'd like it. <laughs> All right, Cracker Barrel obviously is 23. It was invented or it started in 1969 in Lebanon, Tennessee. This is a po' boy and it's making my mouth water at all times. Uh, apparently the name at least is from 1929 where there was a uh, strike, a streetcar drivers, or a streetcar, uh, what would that be? It's not a driver. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, the dudes that run the streetcars in New Orleans went on a strike 
and there was a place down the street that made cheap sandwiches. So the guys would come in, and the guy said, oh, get some of those po' boys a sandwich, and he would give them free food, basically, because of the strike. So hence, I guess, where the uh, po' boy was invented, but I think greatest sandwich on earth, that and the bon me. Uh, murder me. So good. This is the roast beef one. It's got the debris, which is where you kind of dip it in the juice. Mm. 25 is Hardee's. Hardee's was invented in 1960 at Rocky Mount, North Carolina. This is Bananas Foster, which is, I don't even like bananas, but I guess if you put brown sugar and rum on anything, it'll be good and catch it on fire. But apparently, um, New Orleans in the around the turn of the century was the number one place where bananas were imported. So they had all these leftover bananas kind of everywhere. And was that Antoine's? No, it wasn't Antoine's. I forget the name of the restaurant in the 50s. I was like, oh, let's just cook up some bananas, like see what's going on. And then they invented Bananas Foster. They named it after a local politician who ate there at this restaurant a bunch. So yeah, it's real good. 27, Jason's Deli. Jason's Deli was started in 1976 in Beaumont, Texas. And like I said, though, it's up here. Um, I door dashed it from Powell the other day, and it was very good. The pickle, especially good. 28, Oysters Rockefeller. This was 1889 at Antoine's in South, or in uh, New Orleans. A lot of these are New Orleans. Uh, apparently, they were making escargot and couldn't get the snails, and were like, well, let's just put the same flavoring on an oyster, and it was way better. 29 is Lone Star Steakhouse. <laughs> it turns out Lone Star actually started in like the midwest it was like illinois or somewhere but their corporate headquarters now are louisville kentucky so uh yeah technically a southern restaurant and they serve southern food so and 30s oh shrimp and grits so good when you put the hams in the or if you put the, the sausages in there and then i do a cheese grit obviously because you have to so spicy so delicious that's that might be dinner tonight with fried green tomatoes we'll see so how did you do if you got 0 to 30, that went south real quick. If you got 30 to 40, you're Kentucky, you're like a border state, not quite southern. If you got over 40, skew! Thanks for playing, everybody. As always, if you have ideas for trivia, you can always email me at askpowell at delawarelibrary.org, and we will see you in a few weeks. Bye!